AQA, A level physics, turning point, and this is video nine, which is about electron microscopes. So, to look at very, very, very small things, we need to use waves with a very, very small wavelength. Now, why? Well, you should remember that diffraction, you get the best diffraction, for example, through a slit if the size of the slit is about the same size as the wavelength of the waves. Look at this ripple tank image here. Yeah, if the size of the slits is about the same size as the wavelength, you get lots of diffraction, you get lots of information about what's going on, in other words, about the slits. So, if you use optical microscopes, light microscopes, uh, the resolution, your best resolution is about 200 nanometers. Resolution meaning kind of the, the smallest distances that you can resolve yeah, between points. Uh, with x-rays, you can get to about 10 nanometers. X-rays can be used, they're used to look at crystals, to gain information about crystals. This is how they discovered the structure of DNA, was uh, x-ray crystallography. Uh, but if you want to look really, really, really small, um, you need fast electrons. And we saw in the last video that fast moving electrons can have a very, very small wavelength. OK, so electron microscopy is using electrons as very, very, very small wavelength waves. Now, um, this equation here, lambda, this equation here, yeah. I mean, that's probably the equation that you're going to use. As they are very, very, very fast electrons, we should be taking relativistic effects into account. You don't need this equation. You won't have to use this equation. But strictly speaking, you should. But never mind. You'll probably, if there's a, a in fact, an electron micrograph question would just be kind of descriptive. So how do they work? You would have uh, an electron source something where the electrons are coming from, thermionic emission. Do you remember that? Can you describe what that is? Uh, the electrons are accelerated using a big voltage. So the electrons, there's your anode there. So the electrons will be accelerated so that they have a very small wavelength. Uh, the beam of electrons will be focused uh, using magnetic lenses. Remember that a current experiences a force in a magnetic field, so a beam of electrons will. And if you have the right shape of magnetic field, you, you've got a magnetic lens to focus. And you focus it into a small beam, uh, and then it goes, in, now it may be reflected by the sample, it may go through the sample, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but then it can be focused again onto a screen and you can pick up information or some kind of like a CCD maybe. Now, there are two types of electron microscope that you need to know about uh, and you need to know the differences between them. You've got a scanning electron microscope uh, and you've got a transmission electron microscope. Now, the main difference is the scanning one uh, we're looking at the surface of the sample. Uh, the transmission one, the beam of electrons actually goes through the sample uh, and then you gain information from the electrons afterwards. So scanning is surface and transmission is through the sample. The transmission electron microscope, let's talk about that. So you've got your magnetic lenses focus the beam of electrons to a small area then these electrons go through the specimen. Uh, then you magnify the beam. After it's been through, you magnify the beam and you capture the image on some kind of a sensor. OK, um, to do this, the sample must be very, very thin. There's lots of preparation needed, uh, but you do get better resolution of the two types of microscope. This is transmission electron microscope, a TEM. A scanning electron microscope, you have a very, very, very small spot, a uh, very, very tight beam of electrons, uh, and this scans the sample. Yes, it goes whoosh, 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 and scans the sample. 
uh, and the electrons bounce off and then you detect the electrons which have reflected off the sample uh, and you also get x-rays and you can uh, detect the x-rays and get information about the sample as well. The electrons don't go through the sample but you get a, a three-dimensional image of the surface so you see the surface of the sample. If you look at these pictures here, this is some kind of probably bits of a transistor, uh, and these are some kind of bacteria, and you get these fantastic images of the sample. The sample needs much less preparation. Um, uh, the resolution isn't as good as a TEM. Is this an SEM or a TEM? Is it a SEM or a TEM? And from what we've talked about, you should know that it is a SEM. <laughs>